welcome to the Acid Trash Jamboree. Back in business after another short break, following the completion of 50 episodes. Okay, so after a few music focus videos, it's time to take a look at some trashy films again. And today, in honour of it being Halloween, I thought I'd cover the first three Slumber Party Massacre movies, as packaged together in this convenient double DVD set. As you may be aware, there's a recent 2021 sequel using the name, as well as plenty of rip-offs and spin-offs out there, one or two of which I also own. But yeah, I'll just be concentrating on the main three for now. So, for the uninitiated, I don't suppose you need to be a rocket scientist to work out that these films all revolve around vulnerable high school girls having slumber parties which end up being gatecrashed by psycho serial killers. And yeah, in the first one, it's a girl named Trish doing the honours, organising a girly gathering whilst her mum and dad are away on holiday. Said parents have arranged for their next-door neighbour, David Contant, to watch over Trish and keep her out of trouble. Luckily for her, Contant doesn't seem overly bothered that she and her girlfriends are planning a night of debauchery. Meanwhile, you guessed it, Russ Thorne, a deranged killer, has escaped from a psychiatric unit and is well and truly on the loose. After stalking around Trish's school and offing a telephone repair woman, Thor nicks her van and uses it as his hideout. Armed with a power drill, once night falls, Thorne turns his attention to the partygoers. With the revellers and pretty much anyone who goes near the house in grave danger, it's up to a girl named Valerie and her bratty little sister Courtney who live across the street to save the day. Okay, so if aliens landed tomorrow and demanded to know what a slasher film is, you could do a lot worse than to show them the Slumber Party Massacre. Yeah, talk about a no-frills, textbook example of the subgenre. Whilst I've no doubt moaned before about being bored with generic slashers, for all its predictability and lack of originality, I've always enjoyed this one, and yeah, my last viewing was no different. Okay, so the end result apparently wasn't what the screenplay writer had in mind. Yeah, famously, the original script was written by feminist Rita Mae Brown and was intended as a send-up, though it ended up being modified, shall we say, turning it into a way more typical, horror-centric production. Yeah, while some jokes and obvious examples of feminist symbolism found their way into the finished film, the Slumber Party Massacre is pretty much all about the body count and gore, with a huge side portion of gratuitous female nudity chucked in for good measure. And let's not pretend otherwise, if you're a slasher fan, this is precisely why you sit down to watch them. So yeah, this more than delivers in that respect. Apart from that, it's paced well, and at a lean 76 minutes, it never really has a chance to get boring. Chuck in a nicely moody Halloween knockoff score, and a barely happy ending, and yeah, as I said, slasher nirvana. That said, if you prefer your serial killers to be masked, or with their faces otherwise hidden, be warned that Slumber Party Massacre does the he-knows-you're-alone thing of revealing Thorne's face pretty much right away. I know this is a deal-breaker for some, and yeah, it ruined he-knows-you're-alone for me, as I just didn't find the killer to be at all creepy. But yeah, for some reason, I don't mind it here. Whilst Thorne isn't exactly what you'd call a pant-fillingly scary screen presence, he gets the job done effectively enough. Anyway, as I keep saying, this is Slasher 101 stuff through and through, which isn't quite what you can say about all the films in the franchise, but more on that in a second. Okay, so in order to talk about said sequels, I will have to reveal some spoiler-type details along the way, so you have been warned. 
Not that these are the world's most twisty, turny, red herring laden films known to man. But speaking as someone who hates any kind of spoiler, I thought I'd put that out there. And yeah, having just about survived the ordeal from five years before, Valerie and Courtney have had their lives turned upside down nonetheless. Valerie ended up losing her mind and has been committed to a mental institute, whilst Courtney suffers from terrifyingly real nightmares in which she's being stalked and attacked by an unknown Elvis-esque 50s rocker with a power drill attached to the end of a blood-red electric guitar. This might have something to do with the fact that Courtney is now the lead guitarist in an all-girl, bangles-styled new wave band. When the opportunity arises to spend a birthday weekend away at a swanky condo with her bandmates, Courtney is keen to go to hopefully take her mind off all her problems. Of course, their girly get-together is interrupted by a bunch of horny boys who are desperate to make some sweet music of their own with them. Unfortunately for all involved, Courtney's freakish nightmares soon go into overdrive, blurring with reality, with predictably gory results. So yeah, if you hadn't guessed already, this one blatantly borrows quite a bit from the whole Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. That said, this doesn't try to be anywhere near as dark and twisted as those early Freddy films, amping up the humour present in the first Slumber Party Massacre, and even giving the killer a couple of song and dance numbers along the way. Yeah, whilst it wasn't unheard of for slasher films to feature new wave or rock bands playing at whatever party or prom event was integral to the plot, you never saw them breaking the fourth wall, doing full-on, campy, retro greaser routines to camera as they ready themselves for a bit more slaughter. Needless to say, if the idea of a black comedy slasher musical irks you even slightly, then you can probably safely skip over this one and go straight to the third movie. If, however, you're a fan of strange, logic-defying, hallucinatory cinema, then you'll no doubt get something out of Slumber Party Massacre 2. Yeah, with its frequent detours into bizarre, fever dream imagery and a bonkers plot that scarcely makes any sense, this is quite the trip. Some of the gore sequences are quite creative and gross, tipping things into weirdo body horror territory on a couple of occasions. And yeah, the film as a whole just has that anything goes nightmarish quality which is always welcome as far as I'm concerned. Pacing is fine, with everything building towards a hectic climax, and again, this lasts under 80 minutes, so even if you hate it, it won't take up too much of your time. So, very much an oddity, but an entertaining one, and yeah, overall, I'd say this is probably my favourite of the three. Okay, so following on from the thoroughly mental second instalment, 1990's Slumber Party Massacre 3 ended up as more of a return to the generic slasherisms of the original. So generic, in fact, that come my re-watching session of this, I had zero recollection of even having seen it before. I mean, I probably had, seeing as I shelled out money for this set, but yeah, whilst the first two stayed in my mind pretty readily in the interim, for some reason, this one ended up completely forgotten. That's not to say it's awful. Again, if you're in the mood for completely predictable slasher thrills and spills, then this one will scratch the itch as well as any other C-list effort you might care to mention. Which is just as well, considering how late in the cycle this one came out. Yeah, thankfully, it has more in common with its 80s forebears than the overly goofy crud I normally associate with 90s horror. As for the plot, well, I barely need to say anything. 
Yeah, whilst this has nothing to do with either of the first two in terms of its characters, it's the same basic setup. A girl named Jackie throws the slumber party, this time whilst her parents are away house hunting. Of course, once darkness descends and the girls get their skimpy pyjamas on, the requisite randy boys make an appearance, closely followed by yet another serial killer, masked this time, who's hell-bent on pooping their party with quite the selection of weaponry. Now, Jackie seems to be a magnet for weirdos, meaning there's no shortage of shifty sorts snooping about the house, though whether any of them are behind the mask remains to be seen. So yeah, as I keep saying, textbook stuff all round. This one is a touch longer than the preceding instalments, meaning it does drag a bit in places, though this is nothing new in the realms of slasher movies. Thankfully, it's certainly not the worst offender in that respect, with just enough hits of the good stuff on offer to keep you awake till the end. So, definitely the weakest entry in the trilogy, but still pretty good, providing you're not completely burnt out on slashers. Right, that wraps up today's video. I more or less could have picked anything off the shelf to cover this Halloween, but instead of agonising over the perfect combination of films, I figured I'd keep it simple and just review the last few things I watched. If you're new to the channel, basically I'm here to talk about the things that I find interesting and own physically. So yeah, films obviously, horror, exploitation etc, as well as all kinds of music, mostly underground or obscure stuff, stretching from back in the 60s right up to the present day. So yeah, if that sounds your thing, please hit subscribe to keep up to date and check out the archive for plenty more content amassed over the past 10 months. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon on the Acid Trash Jamboree.